Hi Bootsie, it's me, Tony Bomboni ASMR. Welcome back, you little tinglehead. In today's video, I'm going to be speaking about a day in my spiritual life and what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. I've recently began practicing meditations, prayers, lighting incenses and candles, and working crystals to help me and improve my lifestyle. So, the shirt was a little off balance here. So, um, I wanted to focus on that for this video, and a lot of people seemed to have misunderstood when I had the Buddha in the, one of the last videos I had, uh, but I am not associated with any religion. That was just a symbol of peace to me. So, I'll start off by showing you a crystal here. Uh, this one is pyrite. And pyrite is a beautiful cube. I'll be showing you up close footages as well. But this cube, I'm checking my phone for some of this info because I can easily forget there's so many crystals to work with. So you forget some of the properties sometimes, but it's also known as fool's gold, and it's a stone of protection and intellect. It enhances intelligence, logic, creativity, mental stability, analysis, memory, and psychic development. It can help you tap your own mental talents and abilities. It's a powerful protection stone and very grounding. I love how shiny it is, too. She's a good luck and good fortune as well. So, that's that. And typically when I meditate with a crystal, I just hold it in my palms, put it in my lap, and I close my eyes, and I take deep breaths, and I focus inward within me. And I begin to feel lighter. And it can be whatever you do, but uh, however you practice it, that's what works for you. That's what you should continue to do. So I just do whatever works for me. Okay, the next one I'm going to show you is the black obsidian. It looks like a virtuous black hole. And it's really cool. Um, it's like a psychic ball orb almost. Obsidian is basically natural volcanic glass. It's a very protective stone and is excellent for removing negativity. It's also excellent protection against psychic attacks. Obsidian protects the gentle one from abuse and is used to cut attachment cords to release one. It's a grounding stone and healing. It's an excellent manifestation stone. Physically, it's said to benefit the intestines, stomach, and muscle tissues, and can rid of viral or bacteria infections. It focuses and sharpens internal and external vision, it helps get in touch with buried issues before they come out. So, um, it's related to the root chakra, and um, there are different kinds of obsidian, like green obsidian, this is just the black one. I uh, like to leave it in my room. I've had it in, um, I keep it in my bedroom for years now. Uh, wherever I move, I take this with me, as well as all my crystals, and I just find it soaks up everything. And of course, I like to recharge my crystals, which I do by uh, putting them in salt. That's my preferred method. I find sunlight damages them and bleaches the crystals color. And moonlight is a good one, but This is a quartz point, and I know basically what it means to me, but this is basically the info I pulled out of the internet. Uh, it's a power stone, and it's called by the Universal Crystal. Because of its many uses, it enhances energy by absorbing, balancing, storing, focusing, amplifying, and transmitting. It channels the universal energy. It also enhances the thoughts as they are the form of energy itself. And because it directs and 
Southwest Energy. It's really beneficial for healing, meditation, protection, manifestation, and channeling. It's also good for storing and retrieving information of all types, as information is a form of an energy pattern also. And it's good for programming to use for a particular purpose. Due to its ability to balance, quartz is excellent for harmonizing and balancing one's environment. It's also good for energizing other crystals. I use this for my crystal grid too. Uh, if you don't know what a crystal grid is, you basically put a stone, a keystone in the center and you put the quartz all around pointing. You need the quartz points. And you need to point them inwards towards the stone that you're charging up to manifest your desires through that stone that you're charging up. So that's what you do with it. And it's also a really good stone for me to meditate with as well. And I just hold it in my palms and it just really gets rid of that negativity. It clears me up inside out like how salt would clear the stone. That's how I feel like the ions and everything. It really digs deeper in the source, if you know what I mean. Next is green aventurine. And I was not familiar with this until recently. I bought a few purchases of crystals, but this one said to benefit one in all areas of creativity and imagination as well as mental clarity and intellect. Um, it enhances prosperity and brings career success. It's a gentle stone, energetic, that gives a sense of balance and calm and enhances your happiness. It also helps one to see alternatives and potentials in all situations, giving a positive outlook, courage, and inner strength. It's also said to bring luck, and especially in the games of chance. <laughs> Green Aventurine is also a mystical stone of prosperity. Aventurine brings friendship to one's life. It's also a stone of protection energies. Folklore and metaphysical lore say that physically it is beneficial for blood, circulatory system, balancing blood pressure, nausea, headaches, sinus problems, allergies, general sleep disorders and eczema. No? Okay. So, it's associated with the heart chakra as well. It's a good one. Heart chakra, as you all know, is green. Tiger's eye. Tiger's eye is a really pretty one. I like it. It is a crystal with lovely bands of this yellow golden color throughout it. It's a power stone that it's harmony and balance. It helps you to release anxiety and fear. It stimulates taking action. It helps you to make decisions with understanding and discernment. And it's helping you to be unclouded by your emotional judgments. So, this is a good one I used recently. I got this actually as a gift from some package I ordered online. So, I think it was meant to be that I needed this. I guess somehow the healer to find things in your life that somehow just pop, like when you see one crystal a lot, like one crystal in particular that I tend to see a lot is purple amethyst. And so, uh, I do have one, I'm going to show it to you now, but um, it really helps me release that anger somehow. I channel it through me by holding it in my left hand and it just cycles through my body somehow and out the right hand. someday, but this is basically the Court of Love. And Rose Quartz is often called the Love Stone. Of course, it's an energetic hallmark that is unconditional love that opens the heart chakra. This makes Rose Quartz a stone for every type of love. Family, platonic, romantic, unconditional, and self-love. As a variety of quartz, Rose has high energy levels, and this strong energy can enhance love in any situation. This opens the heart chakra to all forms. So, um, basically in the psychic and spiritual realms, rose quartz is used to attract love for love spells and charms, and also to ease the process of transition and dying to make the transition gentle. Interesting, I didn't know that part. But yeah, this is also a very common one. Basically, all the quartz are pretty common, but uh, maybe except not quartz, but uh, this is used very, very typically higher energy level, so that's proof in itself that the metaphysicalness of each crystal has a meaning beyond its origin, if you know what I mean, beyond the hardness 
scale levels and the clarity and look. I'm actually getting a ruby ring. It's going to be my first ring that I'm actually wearing. Uh, and I, I guess I'm going to show it to you in another video, or maybe not, depends, but uh, if I remember. But ruby in itself has many other properties as well. When I come to it, I guess I'll show it to you. But this is malachite. I've had this for about four years now. It's a stone of transforming, transformation. And whether the transformation is demonstrated on this plane as balancing pure love and one's well-being, protection, or spiritual evolution, it brings positive transformation again and again. It also assists in making these transforming changes with gentleness of the heart, easing the transition from one state to the other. The stone of good fortune and abundance and prosperity. It's a facet of transforming a physical or mental state of lack and can also assist this by bringing productive and lucrative work or career into play. This can bring great success and confidence in one person. The vibrations of this malachite release and diffuse those of victimization by demonstrating the power of oneself. It's also a very protective stone, especially helpful for general protection from evil. Interesting. Now I come on to the purple amethyst and I bought this in a store in California. in its stone. It's a very heavy rock. Um, the purple amethyst is um, basically, if I could find it, I'm flipping through my phone here. It's a meditative and calming stone which works in the emotional, spiritual, and physical planes to promote calm, balance, and peace. Also used to eliminate beneficial when dealing with legal problems and money issues, which can lead to prosperity and abundance, though it's not the best known prosperity stone. Okay. In psychic and spiritual realms, amethyst is an excellent all-purpose stone that can increase spirituality and enhance intuition and psychic powers of all kinds. It does this by making a clear connection between the earth plane and other plane in the world. It's also excellent for meditation and lucid dreaming, used to open one channels to telepathy, past life regression, clear audience, clairvoyance, communication with angels. Also protects against psychic attacks during spiritual work. A very lovely stone you are, Amethyst. Very popular and common, but lovely. Now these two are jade stones. I bought them at the same time I bought the Malachite one. And I don't know if this jade one has ruby eyes on it. This frog has a history behind it in a Chinese culture. It has a coin in its mouth, and it's sitting on a bunch of coins. There's a bunch of coins running down its back. It's representative of wealth. And this Buddha is holding an orb and carrying a sack of money. It's another representative of wealth and attracting prosperity. I've had these a long time and it's brought me a long way in the past four years. There was one that was much larger than this. I plan on getting someday. And um, it's the same exact replica of this except larger and I just feel like it had much more of an effect. So that, it's pretty cool. Um, they both contain uh, jade and jade is a stone of the heart. Such as related to the heart chakra and beneficial for the heart chakra related issues. Of course, it can attract and enhance love of all kinds. It's also a stone of generosity and fidelity. Also considered to be good for the physical heart and for emotional balance and stability. It's used in crystal healing for increasing self reliance. Jade's also very helpful as a stone of abundance. Physically, jade is used in crystal healing for lung problems, immune system weakness, kidney problems, PTSD, and nervous system overwork. Jade is also energized by its color and really 
relates to those color energies as well. So it comes in all forms, but you can do whatever you want with it, basically. Like make Buddhas and frogs. And finally, one of the last crystals is pyrite. Like the purple amethyst that comes on a stone like this. And you can see a whole bunch of clusters here. Very patterned on the top, sharp ridges. Very powerful stone, very yellow in color. And pyrite is a healer's gold, or fool's gold, I guess. It's a stone of intellect and protection. It enhances intelligence, mental stability, logic, analysis, memory, psychic development, and creativity. It can help you tap your own latent mental talents and abilities. It's a powerful protection stone and very grounding. It's a stone that brings energies of good luck or good fortune. So I guess that's where they got the fool's gold interpretation of it. Even though it looks barely much of anything like pyrite wood, but... I'm sorry if I said pyrite, this is citrine. Uh, I don't think I meant to say pyrite, maybe I did, I don't know. But it does not look like pyrite, it is indeed citrine. Another one of my favorites to meditate with really brings me that mental clarity that I need. The intellectual dosage I need for the day to function. As far as crystals go, this is a bracelet. bunch of crystals. Um, these two at the ends are just regular beads. Uh, the ones at the outer ends are tiger's eye, then inward goes green aventurine, then pyrite, and then in the middle it's malachite. So, each bracelet has their own intention. I just got this online some store. Alright, so I decided to get a candle and light it because it doesn't matter what candle it is, what scent it is, anything. Um, you can basically light any candle uh, as long as it has a certain color with your certain intention. So with the white color, that is the intention of clearing the air and having a sort of clean boundary around you. A sort of uh, slate to start from and purify the air around you so I like white for that reason and I could just light it up while I'm meditating before or after doesn't matter seen before. I use these as well. They're Tibetan meditation bowls. This is the first one I bought, not the one that I've used in the other video, which was with the chakra meditation bowls. And there's so many to choose from. There are these crystal meditation bowls. There's the huge ones, the small ones. Anything really, as long as you have a bowl and a gong. Basically what these do is these, when you gong them, they uh, vibrate on your inside and uh, balance your chakras out. They balance you out um, in terms of mental clarity and stimulation so that your body is more aware and in tune with itself. So uh, these help you balance yourself out if you're feeling unstable, 
uh, some days you know, some days when I'm frustrated these can really actually help me if I remind myself to perform with these and uh, there was a couple times where I laid the bowls out all over my body and I just conked them myself because I didn't have anyone else to do that with me so it'll really tune into your frequencies and your meridians and organize everything in a cellular level so this is my Himalayan salt lamp, and this is my Eye of Horus necklace and the uh, Native American raven necklace that I had many, many years now, it seems. And so when I light this, it basically releases these ions from the room and helps with your lungs breathing better. is sage and sage as you've seen many times in my videos purifies and cleanses the air around your energy field and around your home and environment as well so when you use this in your house it really uplifts everything that heavy that's been occurring within the past few weeks I like to use this once a week around my household just to really bring about that good karma, good energy coming through. And so I like to open all my doors and windows when I do this, just to get rid of all that that doesn't belong. So I begin to light it up. And when I do, it creates a silvery green smoke that purifies the air all around. cleansed you in that praying for you video on clearing your aura that I did recently. This really does wonders on me and my home environment as well. So I love using it for that. Just 
really clears the air in and around me all throughout. And I say thanks and I say prayer and blessings and I just do this all throughout my arms and my head and circle it around a few times. And there's this thing that I wanted to show you, but I think it might take a few months to arrive, so I'm not going to now, but it's Palo Santo, and it's pure Palo Santo, smothered with moldavite, and it comes from the country of Peru. I can't wait to get it and showcase it to you guys, and see what you think about. But it's basically great for clearing your energy field sage does, except it's way more powerful. So, when I feel I'm totally cleared, I stop using it and I turn it off. It's very powerful. Next thing I like to light up while doing intention meditations, or just like to set the mood around me, is Nakchampa incense. small, but they smell really strong. And they take them in chunks like this. These tiny little incenses. They come in many packs of hundred. of scents. Another thing are these oil warmer burner oils. This one is lavender fields. This one is tranquil spa and this one is sugar spice. This is another one in terms of um, spa environment or meditation relaxation aspect. You can place the oils in the oil warmers and light a tea light under it and this will heat up the substance them to smoke and create the aroma in the room. So the fragrance does something in the brain. It activates you to relax, especially the lavender I recommend. And you always want to leave anything that you burn, like sage incense or oil warmers and candles, even for the matter. Always have them attended at all times and no children should play with them. This is solely adult stuff.
and you have to pick a stone out of the bag every morning to see how your day is going to go. So, let's say I mix these up and I pick, I don't know, this stone. So this stone will mean something, and there are many stones in this pile. Sell us 
next time, bruv.